Hi, I'm Dr. Salt, and this is Just Be Well, and you are? Elizabeth. And uh, you're an RN and a life coach, functional medicine life coach, and we're here to talk about all things functional medicine, all things Just Be Well, all things um, whole life wellness, and all things COVID. We're, hi Yolanda, we're actually talking uh, this week about the modifiable lifestyle factors. Yesterday we talked about, what did we talk about? Sleep. <laughs> sleep. <laughs> we talked about sleep yesterday and um, I hope you got your eight or so hours. Mm -hmm. And today we're talking about exercise and movement and I um, thought we'd talk about 71 ways in which Exercise and movement has been really scientifically and clinically shown to be beneficial. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I have it kind of broken down into what happens in the first 30 minutes, what happens in the first 24 hours, what happens after the first month, what happens after six months, after a year, after 10 years, and after 25 years. So a lot of benefits uh, both long and short and um, you know people get a little freaked out about the word exercise Mandy hi mm -hmm. um, don't freak out about exercise we like to say joyous mm -hmm. movement you know it doesn't have to be a dungeon my my dad used to call the exercise room at his where he used to live in uh, Palm Springs he called it the torture chamber <laughs> um, that's what I call the gym <laughs> yeah you know and I'm not real big on the gym uh, we have exercise equipment um, Brenda hi we have exercise equipment downstairs and 20 minutes on the stationary bike or the treadmill or the weight machine and I just want to shoot myself in the head but um, you know I took uh, her youngest son out um, Canoeing. Canoeing, thank you, today. And uh, we were out, I don't know, probably 45 minutes. And his contribution was sure being sure that we were going to drown and <laughs> holding his paddle sideways so that he was Assistance either... in the water. Yeah, he was either making us go sideways or backwards or almost falling out of the boat. So it was a lot of work. <laughs> and I don't know if I'd call it joyous activity. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> no, actually it was because... I was resigned to the fact that it was going to be just as it was, mm -hmm. so it was fine. So, uh, first of all, in, in, at any time, and like I said, we're talking about all things functional medicine, all things COVID. If you have questions about COVID, if you have questions about um, functional medicine mm -hmm. or just be well, or if you have questions about um, anything at all, fire away because that's why we're here. And um, let's go ahead and get started with the first 30 minutes of exercise. So, what do you think? I think that exercise is very beneficial for what I notice it most in me is my mood. Um, and right after I exercise, I always feel better. Do you ever notice that? Like after you have a good workout. Um, it might be good just, for me. We yeah. just finished exercising. <laughs> we were outdoors. What Your were we mood. Doing? What was that? What were we doing? What were we doing outdoors? Yeah. We had a Nerf gun war <laughs> with the kids. So they're, you know, they wanted to go outside and play, and we needed our activity. So we just kind of incorporated it and got it all in one. They wanted a Nintendo Switch. We got five Nerf guns instead. <laughs> yeah. Cheaper and. In my opinion, more fun, but mm -hmm. also more activity. And they have a great time with it. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think um, exercise does great things for our mood. Right. So mood, absolutely. More effective than an antidepressant. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, regular activity has been shown in studies to be more effective than an antidepressant. And it doesn't take much. No. We're talking about 30 minutes of just being moving. Just 30 minutes of moving. It doesn't, we're not talking about sprinting. We're not talking about running a marathon. We're talking about 30 minutes of mm -hmm. walking. You know, maybe a little bit of a brisk walk for 30 minutes. And it's also helpful for anxiety as well. So during these times when some of us are feeling more anxious than we maybe normally would, um, get in, get out there, get some movement in you. Yeah, so um, it's good for depression, it's good for anxiety, mood in general. You've heard of a runner's high. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. Your body releases endorphins. 
and endorphins are essentially the narcotics that your body makes. <laughs> so that's what happens after just 30 minutes of being active. And if you do that every day, you continue to have those benefits. So what about after a day or so? Or what else can we talk um, about? We've got a million things to talk about here, I guess. We do, yeah. Um, you are high without drugs actually is one of the headings that we're reading right now. Um, it triggers a release of chemicals in the brain that act, the it, that act in the same way that a drug would in improving your mood and um, it helps with clarity of thought. Also, if you exercise regularly, you'll notice that you sleep better. Um, you fall asleep quicker, your quality of sleep is better, so you wake up feeling more rested. You know the commercials where the woman wakes up like in the white room and the sunlight's coming in and she stretches her arms up in the mm, air and this, I just always, I like, I wanna wake up like that and I think <laughs> exercise helps. <laughs> Not quite that good, but... Well, actually, I think it can be. I mean, <laughs> for sure, um, um, you definitely fall asleep. So, Mandy, you were talking about it's really hard to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Exercise helps you fall asleep. Um, but you don't want to exercise, oddly enough, you don't want to exercise in the evening. Um, you don't want to exercise at least three hours mm -hmm. before you're thinking about sleeping. And Probably exercising in the morning is best. Best for routine. It, it's shown that... You know, getting into a routine of exercise, the best time is in the morning because I think that that's the easiest time for us to sneak it in our day and not let the day get away from us. So that's boy, does the day get away? Mm -hmm. Poof, gone, huh? It's like eight thirty or something I know. already. What happened? I know. <laughs> All right. So after only twenty four hours of exercising. Your productivity goes up. Yeah, you're more productive. Um, confidence. It's shown that people exercise just after 24 hours show higher levels of self-confidence. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. This stuff oh, is like the stuff. best drug stuff. ever invented. Mm -hmm. and Yet we, you know, I think there's um, people out there that I see that love to exercise, but I think there's a majority of us, like me, it's like I have to drag myself to do activities some days, and, and it's like, why? Because I know I feel better afterwards, and it has all these benefits. Yeah, it is weird. I, mm -hmm. I love to exercise, mm -hmm. but I actually... It's hard to make the time. Yeah, it is. It's there's hard. always one more thing to do. Yeah, and and it's just like everything else we talk about. You know, if if you don't schedule your sleep... You know, it's just like savings. If you don't s pay yourself first, you'll never save a dime. Mm -hmm. If you don't schedule your sleep, you'll never sleep enough. If you don't schedule your activity, you'll never be active enough. Um, and so on. So pay yourself. Pay yourself in currency in terms of savings and pay yourself in terms of your modifiable lifestyle habits and you'll be healthier. So um, in addition... You feel you talked about more confident. Mm -hmm. You're smarter. Yep. Smarter. You learn information faster. I should be exercising a lot more. <laughs> oh yeah, because you need to be smarter, right? <laughs> I do need to be smarter. I'm not very bright some days. Fran, greetings. Hi, Fran. Hi, and who else is there? Selena. Selena. Hi, Selena. Hi. Um. So. And feeling like you're in more control in your life, having confidence. We talked about that. And then um, you know, talked about sleeping like a baby. Yep. You know, sleep. Really want to do that? Do you really want to wake up every hour crying with a load in your pants? Is that <laughs> is that what we want to do? No, I think that's a weird term, don't mm -hmm. you think? But anyway, sleep sleep well. So after just a month, or do you have more to say about? No, that? I think we're good on twenty four hours. Okay, so why don't you tell me something fun and exciting about after just one month? After one month, you become a quicker learner because it stimulates gray matter in the brain. Yeah. Um, regular activity, it's, it's really fascinating. Sleep and exercise almost parallel each other. There are studies that show that if you learn something and then sleep on it, you've heard that term before, mm -hmm. you actually remember it better. And there are other studies that show if you learn something and go exercise, 
you do better on the test. So you learn it better. So there's something about the way it primes your neurons or something and just makes your, your ability to learn better. Mm -hmm. I used to run all the time in med school. I thought it was for stress management, but maybe it was so I could remember that crap. Mm -hmm. Medical school is the intellectual equivalent of being handed the New York City phone book and being told that by the end of the year, you're gonna be given a thousand names and you'll have to line them up with the right numbers. I, don't, I just didn't find the, the, the approach to learning in med school to be really very intellectually stimulating. It was more memorization and stuff. But fortunately, you learn lifelong learning, right? You get mm -hmm. to learn. What else you got on your list there? You're making smarter choices. You make smarter choices, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, it's been shown that people who exercise regularly eat better. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you become um, more aware of how much it costs, how much food costs in terms of calories, right? You start to learn that you gotta, you gotta run like a decade for every you mm -hmm. know, donut you eat, mm -hmm. and people tend to stop eating quite as many donuts. Well, I think that in, too when Andrea, you're hi. when you're feeling better, you and Jody, you hi. automatically want to eat better. Yeah, you know? when you're when you're right, I think mm -hmm. it all kind of goes together. Mm -hmm. So that's true. So being um, feeling more in control of your life by taking that step to exercise gives you, as we talked about the, a minute ago, the ability to make a better decision about. Um, than all the other choices you make in mm -hmm. your life. Yeah. Um, we talked about sleeping like a baby. We talked about, <laughs> oh, what about your energy level? It goes down because you must be tired all the time when you exercise, right? It actually goes up. And I think that's why it's so hard sometimes to exercise is because you have no energy. And to get energy, you have to do the one thing you don't want to do, which is exercise. Right. So exercising does increase your energy levels. Yeah, you don't wait until you feel good to exercise. Mm -hmm. Start exercising so that you can feel good and start where you are. You don't start running marathons. You start with just a little more movement. Right, and maybe running's not for you. There right. are so many ways to be active that aren't running. Maybe you're, maybe you enjoy yoga. Maybe it's walking. Gardening. Yeah, gardening. Um, cleaning. I love to clean. So when I'm cleaning, I try to... Something seriously wrong with <laughs> I try to, you know, incorporate that into... It's one of my activities. And I treat it like an exercise, a joyous exercise. Sometimes the uh, music's on 11 and she's rocking mm -hmm. and clean, cleaning the place. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. It'd be a good, a good way to just bring uh, an, another level of activity to your day mm -hmm. that isn't... You know, yeah. lifting dumbbells or something like that. Yeah, if, if there's an activity that you absolutely don't enjoy, there is always one that you do. So do that instead. Six months. Six months of exercise. So imagine how much better you feel after taking your blood pressure medicine for six months. Mm -hmm. Not really. Not at all. <laughs> you don't feel better from taking your blood pressure medicine. Imagine how much better you take for, by taking your uh, heart medicine after six months. Yeah, no, you don't feel better. But if you exercise consistently for six months, your love life gets better. That's not all bad. No, it improves testosterone levels. Yep, for men it improves testosterone levels. And for men, in addition to that, it makes them more um, sensitive. So it's almost like it raises their test, their uh, estrogen or something mm -hmm. as well. It doesn't, but I mean, it, it, their studies show that mm -hmm. it makes them more attentive. Um, and I think that may have something to do with the level of endorphins and stuff that are circulating other hormones, maybe even dopamine and um, things like that. And so um, you ladies, I'm sure, will attest to the idea that um, a, lot, a big piece of your mood is how uh, interested your husband is, you know? And if your husband is uh, pay, paying real attention to you, mm -hmm. um, that's gonna do something for your interest in your love life as well. So it works both ways, not yep. just men. No. 
nothing else on that page on the 34 and 5 that you wanted to talk about? Um, no. Okay. Um, all right, go ahead. Keeps your heart healthy. And I think that's one that we um, are aware of, obviously. People Exercise are aware of it. Is good of our good for our heart, but it actually shows... Um, Six months of regular exercise results in a 30% reduction of C-reactive protein. Right. It lowers your cholesterol and it lowers your C-reactive protein. So cholesterol, we all know. C-reactive protein, maybe you haven't heard of. It's, it's a marker of inflammation and it's been shown to be uh, a minor independent risk factor for heart disease. And running lowers that marker of inflammation. So... Not only does it lower your cholesterol, not only does it raise, it lowers your bad cholesterol, it raises your good cholesterol, it lowers inflammation. So it does almost everything good for your heart. Uh, lowers stress. Stress is a big uh, influencer of heart disease as well. Um, the one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't change your homocysteine, unfortunately. Um, and... Um, yeah, oh, well also it can actually reverse our, our we call it uh, hardening of the arteries, stiffness called compliance, running or exercise, not running, um, activity will um, reverse that stiffening of the arteries and that's a big deal because that, you're, the way the system works, it's like a snake swallowing something, it stretches and it's, it's not only the heart pumping but it's the arteries pumping too. And by, um, by doing that, by having these stretchy uh, arteries, um, you can actually get more blood flow to your organs. So that's really important. Um, great music always helps me clean. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. What did Selena say? That's the best way to clean. I'm way more productive. Yep, with Agreed. some music. Yep, yep, go with the beat of music. Get you moving. Yeah, you can kind of see the marks in the carpet when she's been, well, depends, you can tell what song she's been on by yeah. the marks in the carpet. No. <laughs> yeah, and blood sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it lowers your blood sugar. Exercise lowers blood sugar. So it's, it's interesting, um, you know, a lot of new diabetics will think, oh, well, I'm going to be really active today. I should take more insulin. But it's the opposite. Oh, I'm going to be really active today. I should take less insulin. And if I'm sick, I should probably take one and a half times my insulin. I should take more insulin. Mm -hmm. It's kind of backwards from what people think. Mm -hmm. But um, think about it this way. Your muscles are the primary users other than your brain. Your brain and your muscles are your primary users of uh, sugar. And so if you're exercising, you're burning more sugar, which means you need less um, insulin to get it out of your blood. So it definitely helps with your... Um, with your um, blood sugar, but it also lowers your risk of getting diabetes by something like, what, 20% or something. So another giant benefit. Um, what else you got on your list there? You're living a healthy lifestyle. Activity will gradually affect and improve your diet and lifestyle habits like we talked about before. Um, when you exercise, you feel good, with, which motivates you to eat well, which motivates you to take care of yourself, which motivates you to keep exercising. Right, and so people who are giving counseling alone, uh, looking at, at too much, drinking too much, alcoholism, um, people who are giving counseling alone had essentially no change in their behavior, but people who were placed on a regular activity actually reduced their alcohol consumption significantly. And um, you know, part of that may be because it helps with depression and anxiety and stuff like that and social angst. And um, I used to run a drug and alcohol treatment center. Uh, and it's my opinion that with uh, alcoholism, and I'll show you somebody who also has a, uh, another diagnosable issue, um, usually uh, social phobia mm -hmm. or depression or anxiety. Mm -hmm. 
So the, the exercise directly addresses that underlying reason for alcoholism right. in many people's the cases. The driving force to why they do it. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that was like number 40-something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're on 44. So 44. Greater intelligence. Activity. It's A lot of these say running. and, and I, got, I got some of these off of a running mm -hmm. page. So it says running, but it really is just activity. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be running. No. Um, yeah, so it increases your, um, your intelligence. Now, intelligence isn't an IQ. We used to think that intelligence was this IQ. There is no one number for intelligence. I like to tell a story about my two sons. Well, you know, one of them's a PhD physicist. The other one is uh, a, runs an Apple store. But in high school, of course, the physicist, he was getting straight A's and blah, blah, blah. And the younger son was having to follow in those footsteps and, you know, frankly, couldn't organize the contents of his own pockets which I can't either, by the way. Um, but he had a totally different skill set. He wasn't that great at math or uh, school in general, but he had a billion and two friends, and, um, and he writes songs. Like, he went to school to become a recording engineer, uh, and I just think to myself, gosh, he can write a song, I can't, and his brother can do math, I think I can. I can't right now, but if I studied, I think I could. So, um, you know, who's really smarter? The one that can do something I absolutely can't do or the one that can do stuff I can do? You know, this idea of intelligence we have, mm -hmm. why is it that the C students go to, the, the dropouts and the C students go on to start businesses that are worth billions of dollars and the straight A students, the best they can do is get a teaching job someplace? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's an important job. I don't mean to belittle it, but right. I just mean that, that the degree of success in school doesn't doesn't necessarily tell us anything at all. No, and everybody is smart in their own way. Yeah, exactly. Everybody has an intelligence. If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life thinking that it's an idiot. Yeah, and you know, um, I I have uh, a friend whose son is autistic or not autistic, uh, Downs, trisomy twenty three. And his measured IQ is about is very low, but that is a kid who is happy all the time, and he is a kid who will make you happy just by being in his presence. And I think that's <laughs> that's a gift. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful gift. Yeah. Um, and um, so I think this idea of what smart is, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, being act being active will get the stuff flowing in your brain. Yep, it allows your brain to have higher level thoughts, which I thought was really awesome. In fact, again, that parallel between sleep and exercise. There's a a part of sleep, um, REM sleep kind of integrates your your memories, and non REM sleep actually helps you solve problems. And the, there's a big parallel between getting into that sort of thoughtless state of exercise um, and being in that rimless, that non-rim sleep. And they both um, allow you to come up with novel solutions to problems that you're facing. Let me see it. Got something else down there? No. Yeah. Oh yeah, a ton of them. Yolanda. We are all brilliant in our own ways. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So, okay, where are we? After, after a, a year. year. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, after a year, um, you know, after a year of eating brownies and ding-dongs, boy, you just feel great, right? No. No. No, you don't. You don't feel great. Mm -hmm. You don't feel great after taking your blood pressure medicine. But if you exercise for a year, probably you need your blood pressure mm -hmm. medicine and you'd have all of the benefits we've talked about so far plus what we're about to talk about mm -hmm. so running exercising on a regular basis causes neuromuscular changes that mm -hmm. lead to better efficiency better body efficiency you know um, when I used to live in a tent in Yosemite for fun we would um, 
take the tram over to the um, Happy Isles. And from there, we would run to the summit of Half Dome and back, which I think is 27 miles round trip. We just did it for fun. <laughs> but, that, but we were so efficient because we were so active all the time, you know? I mean, it was like nothing to just reach up into a tree branch and do a one-arm pull-up. We just, that was just sort of a habit. We didn't even think it was a big deal. But that efficiency of your muscles is just unbelievable. The difference, I, I like to talk, you know, in airplanes, we talk about a performance envelope. Uh, and if you go outside of the performance envelope of an airplane, bad things happen. But the human performance envelope ranges from a couch potato to the most highly trained athlete you can imagine. And for every highly trained athlete, it's different. You know, a world-class badminton person has a different, completely different um, idea about what fitness is than you know a, um, a power lifter or a marathoner or a rock climber. Mm -hmm. But they're all physical specimens of elite caliber and yet very, very different. So you know the, the, what the human body can do in so many different directions is just unbelievable and being physically fit allows for that flexibility of being mm -hmm. able to do different things. And for the prevention of being injured. Yep. You know, you have less likely to have back pain if you have a stronger core. Um, if your legs and your muscles are stronger, you're less likely to suffer from a knee injury. Nope. Um, yeah, so and it's just stronger. You're stronger and sturdier. Stronger and sturdier and more coordinated. Mm -hmm. So some of it is, um, like I used to do this demonstration for patients in my exam rooms where they, you know, they'd be talking about how, you know, what do I need to exercise for? And I'd say, well, watch this. I'm going to trip. And I would stand up, get out of my chair, and I would sort of trip. And I'd, I'd hop three or four times on one leg across the room to get my balance. If you are not strong enough to do that, you fall. And if you fall, you might break your hip, right? Or something else. You might break your kneecap or whatever. So being strong allows you to recover from little stumbles. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole mash of, of things. You're, you're actually more coordinated, you're actually stronger, and then you have the strength to recover. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, what else? What other fun things? After a year, higher spirits. Mental and emotionally, you're doing better. I mean, if you're consistently working out and consistently feeling better every day, um, over the length of a year, think of all those new habits. Think of those new ways of thinking that you're going to um, start doing. And and we when we talked about stamina, it's not just physical stamina, it's mental stamina. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, when you're physically fit, you can actually sit down and do mental work right. better. Yeah. Your memory's better, your short-term memory, your working memory, all of those things improve. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're trying to get your taxes done, <laughs> it's easier. But also, if you're trying to, you know, read a novel or whatever, you can remember the characters. I mean, how many times do you have to, every time you pick up your book, oh, I haven't read in a couple of days. Now, who is that person? I gotta go back three or four pages and read. Well, your memory is better. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. So it works out well. And you look good. You know, yep. you start to feel good. Like I said, you take care of yourself. And if you're running, obviously, or being active, um, you're probably going to be transforming the, those areas of maybe more adipose tissue into more muscle. So. Yep, and you're releasing more growth hormone. Mm -hmm. So not only are you making the better choices just because, oh, I found out I have to run an hour and 45 minutes for every donut I eat, so I'm not going to eat as many donuts, and I, you know, blah, 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 all those mental things, but also you're releasing hormones that um, make you less hungry. You're releasing hormones that make you build lean body mass and burn fat. You're getting less insulin resistance. So, I mean... You, you, you almost can't find something bad about exercise. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I keep saying that bad word exercise. It really, we're not talking about exercise. We're talking movement. about movement, mm -hmm. joyous movement. You know, if you think about it, I, I used to tell this story a lot in clinic. Um, 
Imagine that you're a cave person and it's time to get water. You know, there's no tap. You don't just walk over to the tap. You get back bladders and you tie them onto the end of some long stick and you put it on your shoulder and you walk down the hill to the creek and you fill them up and then you walk back up the hill with these two full yak bladders or whatever. And that's how you get water. And if, it, if you're hungry, you gotta walk over to the berry bush and pick some berries, you know, for a little snack. And if you want a big meal, well now, now we're talking about our blow gun and we're gonna shoot down a monkey or something. Hopefully, oh, that, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, let's make it a partridge. <laughs> I don't know if they use blow guns on partridges, but anyhow. <laughs> Um, so, you know, there's just a ton of things that, that, you know, what does activity do? Well, our bodies evolved in an environment with a lot of activity. Um, it, somebody said that, um, you know, a hunter-gatherer, they don't work nearly as long hours as we do. You know, we, we work ridiculous long hours, but they work more physically hard than we do for shorter mm -hmm. amounts of time. So they're working three to six hours, almost never six hours, more like three to four hours, um, tending a fire and making food and hunting and gathering. And we're working eight to 10 hours sitting on our asses doing nothing, except for you know maybe pushing a button or thinking. To tell people the hardest thing I do every day is turn a page. You know That's not really a ton of physical activity in my line of work. What does this say? Andrea, thanks for this, you guys. I'm on two months of almost daily workouts. Awesome. awesome. And recently started eating healthier. The good timing was good for me to hear this. Yay. <laughs> timing was good. Positive and, reinforcement. Yeah, positive reinforcement. So that's 10 years. Um, that was um, that was after a year. And our skin improves. So, and our skin improves. Yeah, so your complexion starts to even out. And if you suffer from acne, um, that is more likely to go away as well. Yeah. So, um, and part of that is because it uh, balances your hormones. Yeah. yeah. So hormones. it's not And only... you're probably eating healthier. So you're yep. taking out those foods that were maybe causing the irritation in your gut. That led to your skin eruptions. Yep. So. so it also helps PMS and it helps, you know, if you go kind of hyper crazy, you know, humans are great at, at if some is good, more must be better. And so you see the people doing CrossFit and they're, you know, just complete animals. And that's great, except for they're not doing that for health. They think they are. But it turns out there is too much exercise. It is possible, and they're there. <laughs> and then you're, then you're actually going back the other way. So it's, it's a U-shaped curve. Yep. Yeah. So stay up at that, that top before you start going back down. Yeah. No, to, but I don't, wanna, uh, I don't want you to think, oh, good, I don't have to exercise. No, actually, the, that peak is someplace around an hour of vigorous activity every mm -hmm. single day. So anything up to, you know, like sprinting for an hour, uh, up to that hour point, that's, um, that's good. And that equates to about three or four hours of moderate activity. So three or four hours of moderate activity a day is fine. Um, not that you have to do that much, but right. But that's if, kind of if the you're, peak. yeah, it maybe you're in a profession. Um, you know, I used to do floor nursing, and I guarantee you, I was getting moderate activity exercise yeah, for all the majority long. of my shift. So yeah. you know that plays towards the moderate activity if you're in. Why is the Why is the call button always go off at the farthest room? <laughs> <laughs> Every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, so 10 years. After 10 years, yep. So a lot of this is with, you know, weight management. People act, exercise regularly. Once you get around that age of 40, you naturally start to put on weight. And likely you've started to put on weight slowly leading up to there. But if you incorporate daily exercise into your life, um, you're less likely to be overweight. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I don't even have any more to say right. about that. There you go. Mm-hmm. And then, still going strong. If you're still going strong and you're still exercising, um, and and doing your consistent stuff, uh, you might even make it 25 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it lowers your risk of cancers, um, specifically like colon cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, and breast cancer. So you know, in this time of COVID, what is that telling us about immune system function? 
-hmm. You know, it's guarding us against all of these invasive illnesses. People who exercise regularly actually have fewer viral infections, they have fewer cancers, they have fewer allergies actually. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing called Th1 and Th2 um, allergies, sort of the two sides of an allergic response. And exercise actually balances both, which is kind of unusual actually. It's one of the few things that, that balances the whole system. Mm -hmm. It increases something called T regulatory cells. Yeah. So, it's just good for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then again, going back to the emotional well-being, um, life happens and we all go through um, things that are very hard. And if you're exercising and you have that emotional well-being, you're more likely to weather those times um, that we have to go through in life, whether it's losing a loved one or maybe it's um, the stress of being quarantined with four boys and two huge dogs. Um, you're more likely to be able to handle that. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. so. Here, wait a second. Let me, here. Oh, there he is. There's one of the huge dogs right there. It's the length of the bed. <laughs> show, him, show him your mess. Show him my, that's my side of the bed, yeah. <laughs> so it's my messy side table. <laughs> yeah, with my puppy. Anyway. The other day, I showed some people my office, and she just about had a heart attack because my office. I said, "This is his space. This is not my space." <laughs> As I talk about my love for cleaning, I, I'm not allowed to touch his areas. So. <laughs> yeah, my filing technique is is a thin layer on every surface, so you can imagine. But he that. knows where everything is. See, if I clean one thing, if I move one thing, all of a sudden it's like, where did this go? And I can't remember where I put it, so it's best if I don't mess with his stuff. But anyway, after 25 years of exercise, so this is regular exercise throughout your lifetime, you look younger. Yeah, re regular exercisers actually generally look about 10 years younger than their age. And, and part of it is because they haven't gone through um, muscle loss. Um, and there's a fancy name for that. And I was going to throw it out there just to show you how smart I am. And I can't remember it. <laughs> sarcopenia. Sarcopenia. So if you exercise regularly, you don't get sarcopenia. And so you have, you know, you just have a body that looks younger. And then you're releasing growth hormone. And that keeps your skin tighter. It keeps the fat pads from. You've seen the people whose faces just sunk in like that. They look like a living skeleton. It's because they've lost these fat pads and um, having more growth hormone keeps those fat pads in place. There's a few places in your body where you want a little fat and your face is one of them. And then guess what? If you exercise regularly, you live longer. You live longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a good thing. Um, we just watched a movie. What's the name of that movie with Danny DeVito we just watched? Oh, Jumanji? Oh, Jumanji. The yeah. new Jumanji. And, and he's just a curmudgeon like we only Danny DeVito can be. And at the end of the movie, he goes through this whole experience and he realizes he's always saying, growing old sucks and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And then at the end of the movie, he says, you know, growing old and his grandson says, I know grandpa sucks. And he says, no, no, it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I forget that. But growing old's a privilege. And it really is. Um, yeah to watch the grandkids grow up well through facetime <laughs> these right days now, yeah. um and through chat and whatever but yes hopefully mm -hmm. when this is over we get to get back together and see the grandkids and all that mm -hmm. good stuff all right there might be something under here now let's see organized chaos yes uh yeah. no not organized chaos. <laughs> just chaos Okay, have, my I, stuff is organized chaos. I used to have this sign, you know the little triangle with the exclamation point in the middle of it, the warning triangle, yellow, and then it said, caution, high levels of entropy known to exist in this area. <laughs> entropy is the uh, tendency of the universe to move towards more disorder. <laughs> <laughs> so more disorder in my life. Anyway, so yeah, you live longer, you feel better. Mm -hmm. Um, a study of 70-year-old participants who had been lifelong exercises found that their hearts, lungs, and muscles were as good as those of 40-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's another interesting factoid, which I kind of find really fascinating. So 
Imagine, um, a, oh, hi, Kate. Um, imagine a 19-year-old uh, running a marathon, okay? 19-year-old running a marathon has, has a, a certain, you know, average speed. Let's say there's a million 19-year-olds and they're all running a marathon, the average speed. Now, the fastest marathons are generally in the mid-30 years old. So you've got 19-year-olds are on this axis here. The 35, 36-year-olds are the fastest. What age do you think you are when you're back down here to uh, where the 19-year-old average speed is for a marathon? Take a guess. Don't all flood the chat. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is 62. We are built to be uh, runners. I mean, to be just athletic machines. And a 62-year-old can run with a 19-year-old in a marathon. That just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. But it's true. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, and, and it, like, like this said, 70-year-olds who are regular exercisers have the heart, lungs, and muscles, and muscles of average 40-year-olds. Mm -hmm. It's pretty impressive. What else we got that's exciting? Um, you're for, far less likely to suffer from dementia or other brain diseases. You know, people think that they should do a crossword puzzle to not get demented. Actually, you should exercise. Mm -hmm. That's by far, um, mental challenges and mental games have never been shown to have any impact on dementia or any of that stuff. What has are the five modifiable lifestyle factors. So, you know, everything we're talking about this week, including mm -hmm. exercise. Yeah, movement. Yeah, hi. Mm -hmm. and, okay, Celine, you were very close. In fact, I'd say that's... Oh, yeah. 55. We did get a few. Okay. It comes in a little bit late. I guess so. 55, yeah. 60. Good Thank job. you for participating. <laughs> I just was impatient, I guess. Which, that must mean I don't exercise enough, right? What else we got here? So there's just tons of scientific mm -hmm. ex evidence. And we're not talking about much exercise. We're talking about 30 minutes. Yeah. 30 minutes of activity. Um, most days. So most days means four. Now, if you do more than four, that's better. Mm -hmm. But th what we've been talking about here today is 30 minutes of activity a day. So, you know, uh, I actually, no, I didn't get it. I, I rode my bike. I did a, um, a time trial on my bike the other day. I went, I went out to the, to the um, <laughs> trail. I couldn't think of the name. Right. I, I, like, I, I must need more exercise. I don't mind getting demented. Anyway, I rode my bike as fast as I could. Uh, for 15 minutes and I turned around I rode my bike as fast as I could back well when I got back it was only 27 minutes I didn't get 30 minutes out of it so um, but I also was doing a pretty high output um, so that's exercise exercise is good for you oh every domain of life mm -hmm. everything from your body composition to uh, your mental capacity mm -hmm. to your sex life libido Every aspect of life is enhanced by exercise. Yeah. So um, yesterday we went into quite a bit of detail about why um, sleep is so incredibly important for your immune response during this time, especially. Today we talked extensively about exercise mm -hmm. and we talked about how it reduces uh, viral infections, bacterial infections, cancers. It balances that TH1, TH2 business I was telling you about. So critically important, tomorrow we're gonna to talk about nutrition. Mm -hmm. And if anybody has any other questions, we'd love to entertain them. Doris, hi Liz and Tom. Huh? Thanks hi. Doris. Thank you. Hello. All right. I don't know, how long into this are we? We've probably taken up way too much of your yeah, time Yeah, I didn't grab my phone this time, so I'm usually the timekeeper. I think like... there's a clock up here. I'll look, just for fun. No, there's no clock. <laughs> I can tell you that the VCR is set on channel 767, though. <laughs> Whatever that is. All right. So, yeah, makes me want to exercise right now. Yeah, I don't exercise before bed, though. I know. <laughs> All right, we will see you tomorrow, probably in the evening again, or I don't know. Let us know in the comments if, yeah, if a different, different time. time works best. Yeah, if, if mornings, if we get a whole bunch of people saying morning, maybe we'll try to throw it, uh, throw it up in the morning. Um, 
for if we we found out that trying to do it at seven or seven thirty is like right before one of the kids' bedtimes, and it yeah. it's kind of chaos. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that you were ready to come on, uh, sit down here at about uh, eight twenty nine and three quarters. Yep, <laughs> I was ready like fifteen whole seconds early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So all right, what else we have here? Um, what are our thoughts mm. on intermittent fasting? Yep. Um, so I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, the data is um, really strong for a kind of intermittent fasting where you eat from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. every day and you don't eat from 3 p.m. to, to 7 a.m. the mm -hmm. next morning. That, there's strong data for that. There's strong data for like one day a week of not, not eating at all other than you know maybe a protein drink and water. And the reason for adding a protein drink is because if you actually starve yourself, um, you will lose muscle mass. But by taking, um, you know, 15 or 20 grams of protein in a drink, you can preserve your muscle mass, your lean body mass. So um, the data is really strong. Um, and I, I think, um, uh, so here's the thing. We have, I, I say the data is really strong, but what I'm talking about are, are gene chip uh, data. So there hasn't been enough experience with it long term in humans there's good experience in animals there's good experience with looking at which genes are turned on and turned off and it's very favorable so uh i'm i'm very very favorable towards intermittent fasting and i read that it's good for your immune system too that it boosts your immune system yes it does mm -hmm. uh and then there's a question about keto and paleo so uh, i don't think there's one right diet if you look at niches all over the world, um, humans have filled them. And if you talk about um, um, Inuits on a traditional diet of really whale blubber and you know seal meat, um, they are ketogenic. And they're ketogenic for most of their life, uh, all winter for sure, every year, all winter or much of it. And then maybe not quite as ketogenic in the summertime because they have they can harvest they can gather um, and you know people are afraid that if you are on a ketogenic diet you're gonna all kinds of terrible things are gonna happen but the truth is most of the time your numbers get better cholesterol goes down triglycerides go down all kinds of good things happen mm -hmm. um, especially if you're getting enough omega-3 fatty acids so uh, a well-designed ketogenic diet or paleo diet needs to have fish yeah and it's not the the heavy on like the animal proteins as I think some um yeah a lot of people think that a keto them. I mean not a keto uh, yeah a keto mm -hmm. diet and a paleo diet um a paleo diet is 50 percent plant matter by weight, weight. so mm -hmm. if you think about a pound of steak and then you think about a pound of vegetables that's a big pile of vegetables mm -hmm. right it's like a whole head of cabbage um so it's 50 50 by weight yeah. And then a keto diet is mostly fat, not protein. Mm -hmm. So it's not a high protein diet. A lot of people think it's a high protein diet. It's a high fat diet, yeah. moderate protein, extremely low carb. So for us, um, normally we're eating, you know, maybe 70% of our calories from carbs and 20% from protein and 10% from fat. I mean, that would be sort of the ideal high carb diet, right? Mm -hmm. Well, a keto diet is the exact opposite of that. It's 70% fat. fat yeah. It's mostly fat, um, tons and tons of fat, not tons and tons of protein. Mm -hmm. So done well, done right. I think any diet can be healthy. Um, so I don't think there's one right diet. Now, let's see. I tend to do uh, 16-8 and find that doable. Um, you're talking about 168 uh, what? Are we talking about ratios of macronutrients or we're, oh, so you're talking about, about, you're talking about uh, 16 hours of, oh. of fasting and eight hours of eating. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and the data is strongest for those eight hours being in the morning, that's all I was saying. Uh, and, and it's actually better to put them in about six hours or even less, but it's okay. And then what else did you say here? You said you've tried keto, but it was a struggle. It's a struggle for a lot of people. Some people just take naturally to it and some people don't. You lost 52 pounds on a keto. 
but do not eat meat every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you feel so much better. I think that's the thing to go by. Like what diet helps you to feel the best? Like where, you know, um, do a journal of your energy level and your mental clarity and your sleep. Um, all those things are kind of feedback to the food that we're taking in. When I was in college, um, I was a neophyte um, health food nut, and I was a veggie, a vegan, and I was eating tons of pasta and tons of you know carbs, and I was bloated all the time and had gas all the time. I felt terrible, and of course, other people that I was veganing with, they were doing great. And um, then I read uh, a book by Dr. Diadamo, The Blood Type. I don't know that it's um, super valid, but I happen to have type O blood, and that says you should be eating more meat. So I said, oh, I'm going to try this. I started mm -hmm. eating uh, healthy, but, you know, whole foods, less grains, less simple carbs, you know, less processed carbs. And I felt better, way mm -hmm. better. So, um, you know, everybody, I think, metabolism is a little different. And I think it's worth exploring it. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Oh, Mandy said, just ask my sister. <laughs> ask your sister about losing weight, you mean? Is that what you said up here? Is that what it was? No, that was Selena. She said she lost 50. She said right there. Oh. <laughs> We're fighting for We're sure. fighting for <laughs> scrolling. There you go. Just ask your sister. Yeah. yeah. Well, we all know she lies through her teeth anyway. <laughs> it wouldn't help to ask her. <laughs> all right. Now, I think that's it. So, we will talk to you tomorrow about nutrition. And um, we'll be talking mostly about sort of a whole foods diet. Mm -hmm. Because from a whole foods diet, you can build any diet. You can build a keto diet. You can build a paleo diet. You can build a vegan diet. You can build... A vegetarian diet whatever kind of diet you want to build and we're just going to talk about the benefits of certain kinds of foods and you know that kind of stuff all right so we will see you tomorrow uh, leave a comment if you have a preference for time and we'll see uh, who I saw wins one comment for this time for this so, time frame yeah. okay so we'll see if anybody else comments otherwise we'll be at the same time all righty bye bye I'll see if I can push the button